Um, if you don't know his story, go down that rabbit hole, man. Please do appreciate you. Definitely, definitely appreciate you. Shout out to all the OGs in the building. I see a lot of the OG homies in the chat. Um, hey, Lonzo, let's continue uh, before we get Reggie on here. Um, I would love to know how you and, and Reggie met. How did you guys meet? Tell us a story about that and, and maybe even any stories that you have before he comes on. You know what? I knew his dad better than I knew Reggie. Dad, his dad worked for me at Dudos. His dad was a part of the uh, – the, the uh, my Dudos um, team. Reggie was, Wright Jr. joined. He was a part of the uh, gang, he was part of the gang uh, uh, ta- uh, task force in Compton. So me and his dad was much closer than Reggie. I'm, I'm thinking I'm a lot older than Reggie. Let's find out. Mr. Wright, what's up with you, sir? Respect, respect, Alonzo. How you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, uh-huh. man. Everything good with you? Good. Everything's good, man. Good. Just was trying to get... Get this stuff uh, set up. You know, I'm not that good with this Zoom stuff. Even though you say you older than I am. Shit, I'm young, you know. I'm not good with this technology at all. <laughs> take your time. Take your time. Yep. So, hey, uh, now. Um, much respect, Dusty. Hey, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank did, you. Thanks for having me. What year did you join the uh, Compton PD, Doc? I started in 85, but, you know, I started off in the jail. Okay. Okay. Uh, they were eighty-five, but uh, and so but I didn't come on the force until nineteen eighty-nine. Uh, they made me finish college. And, okay. So, you and so I, I started at nineteen, but I'm fifty-five now. Okay. All right. So you never worked at Noodles with your dad, then, right? No, but I came up there a couple of times, uh, especially when uh, Luther Ford had it. You remember when you hired Luther out the Reggie and then worked up yeah, there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had Luther and all the youngsters, and me and Luther used to be partners. And I used to come up there when uh when you had skate land going on at uh with with uh Luther Luther okay. Ford. Okay. Yeah, because see you I know you, but I don't know you like I know your dad. It's a little different, okay? Exactly, exactly. Right. We always knew you from a distance and out of respect because your boy Phil Bailey, he loved you. And Phil okay. and Phil and Gil always talked about you. Now that's my that's my actually my I was my that's my first cousin, rest his soul. Cousin, um, right? Yeah. That's my first yeah. cousin. Yes, he's the one to help me put together the team. For skate land, for Doodles and Skate Land. I, I couldn't go over Doodles or Skate Land if it wasn't for him and your dad and other crews, other folks we had on the team. It wasn't going to Yeah, yeah, but I was a little younger. I was only like 18 or 19. So I used to okay. just come up there and see that long line hanging out on Central waiting to get in there. <laughs> you had to pop it, man. Day. That was a good old. Then how, how did you transition into, into, into uh, working with Death Row, man? You know we got to get on that subject. All right, well, we get into that right quick. Uh, you know, I was still young, and you know how that that uh, atmosphere was. Being around there, being a twenty four. Well, I started working in Death Row about twenty six, twenty seven. But you know, just seeing all of that going on. But me and Sugar was childhood friends. I mean, we 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 the only three, the only two, or, or maybe three people that can say we went to junior high, elementary, junior high, and high school together. And I so I have always, yeah, yeah, we, I have always. We actually, we actually went to Stephen C. Foster, which is a conference school. But then we, our parents were scared for us. You know, we had mamas and daddies. And they said, y'all niggas ain't going over there to Whaley. Y'all going to Hostler, okay. which is, you know, down the street, just a shot down Bullers Road. Right. And so we went to Hostler and went to Linwood. And you went to Linwood. Okay. Wow. I didn't know that, Doc. Good and so we played football together. Yeah. So y'all had a y'all had y'all had a relationship prior to Death Row. Okay, that makes a lot of sense then. That's why he would yeah, yeah, yeah. with his uh with yeah. his that, matter of fact, my sister introduced him to Sharita. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Dusty, you got a question? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to know about your time as a police officer. Uh, Mr. Wright, um, 80s was a you know a tough time in Compton to be an officer. Um, you and your father have dealt with some some real gangsters in Compton back in the day. Who were some of the realest guys that you guys came into contact with on a you know consistent basis? Well, shit, they all they all had their way of being a thug and a gangster. To be honest, I'll talk I'll talk about the ones the people on YouTube know. <laughs> okay. okay, I didn't really know gangster. Freddie Stays and, and Turtle were the two that my dad was always saying was was okay. treacherous. Was okay. was he get the utmost respect to, and so everybody done heard of Turtle and of course the twins and all of that. And that's the guys of Santana Block. Uh, 
uh, a guy named G Ray. G Ray was a killer. That was one in my ear. There, he was from a uh, Acacia block. But his brother got killed by the CB seven O's, and boy, he used to let those seven O's have it. Uh, on the part rule, the blood side, of course. I go into the, the little more era of, of James, uh, Mob James, uh, on the part rule, or, or Victor Welch, which is uh, Rick James. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, you know, people like that. Huncho came around, but they were all doing major and big, big drug time things then. They, so you, as a street cop, you didn't really deal with guys that was on that level because they were like working at the car wash or hanging at the car wash and all of that. And you got to be able to get to get to them um, by doing it right or getting search warrants and stuff like that. And so that was mainly the guys that Alonzo know that was on that side on the team. So they were had a little bit more juice and they weren't just the regular street cops like the Baileys and the right. Gil Cross. Of course, you know, my father, Reggie Sr., the Percy Puritans, the Uri Taylors and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, to be honest, is I do other people, you know, injustice, you know, like a Keefe D who, and, and people like that, because I mainly only speak of the people that was in my era, which was really like early 90s, late 80s, where the guys pretty much was in, in the penitentiary by that time, because that rock cocaine era, it took a lot of brothers out. Y'all just don't know, man, that. That mid eighties, Alonzo, Alonzo said on a lot of that money that he was taking from those dudes. That, <laughs> that was, was some balling boy. That's why Alonzo still doing good, still running clubs and stuff like that. Cause those niggas in the early eighties, my God. You know, I talk about the yeah. 80s, back in the day. It was wild, but if you knew how to navigate, yeah. and stay out of the way, you can you can make yourself some money. But you had to stay yeah. out of the way, and that was the trick. Most but, cats who did, Alonzo. Wait, let's yes, be sir. fair. Let's be honest. Who uh, did? Yeah. Who right. did? Other than the ones that got into music like Dre and all of them, but we know what they really were <laughs> before. <laughs> you know, they lived these dudes' lives that we're talking about. Those dudes in the '80s, I, I can't think of one that that, that made it unscaled. You know, they out now. The good thing about it, all of them out from the tweets to the JJ, all of those dudes like that, JJ Ransom and. And tweet, you know, which was his brother and all of them, Pat, all of them, they they were the ones that had all the money back in the, the late 80s or the 90s or the mid 80s. But they all home now, which is a good thing. But it took a lot of their time off. Yeah, that's uh that's crazy, Doc. Um Reggie, I'm looking at the chat room. They say you always give the best interviews about death row and you're funny. They say they like that. Okay. I'm one of my one of my wow. uh, they say you're looking I good. Appreciate that. 